BSN student currently studying her BSN and um, she's a UK registered nurse and also she's a renal nurse. She has specialized in renal and Catherine is also a blogger. She's also a writer. She, I must, I most of you have, must have seen her article on the Daily Nation. She's also uh, currently a staff mentor and a learning representative with the Royal College of Nursing. Without further ado, we also have uh, Phyllis, our next speaker. Uh, Phyllis is also a UK registered nurse and um, she's also a blogger. And Phyllis is glad to be with us here and also she's a, a theater nurse in London. And uh, we're glad to have both of you here. And without further ado, let's start with uh, Kate. Kate Mimi, welcome, take the stage. Thank you so much, Seth. Um, as you have introduced me, I am Catherine Minor. At least that is what the government of Kenya and the one in the United Kingdom knows me as. My pen name is Kate Mimi. I really hope my sound quality is okay. Yes. yes, thank you. Go ahead. Yeah, um, I'm happy to be here um, through this auspicious forum. It is a good chance for us to have um, a wee talk on um, professional CV structuring because it has been one of the issues that has come up when people are applying for jobs, especially overseas. Whether we acknowledge it or today or we pretend that it is not existing, there's a lot of desire for nurses from all over the world to go to Western countries. Most of the time it's because of um, less um, opportunities back home or maybe they just want to be exposed to better opportunities. So either way, whether it is um, United Kingdom like myself and Phyllis, whether it is um, United States, Australia, Canada, anywhere, there is a way that we need to be able to present our skills and experience. So I'll be happy to take us through this. So thank you, over to you, Seth. Um, well, that was great, interesting, and uh, we also would like to uh, have Phyllis to introduce herself. Welcome, Phyllis. Phyllis. And um, as Phyllis is preparing to join in, We'd like to um, acknowledge most of our speakers, both from Kenya and from the UK. And we appreciate all of you. If you have any question, feel free to put it in the question and answer chat, uh, uh, question and answer a box below. And also if you have anything, comment, please feel free to put it in the chat and we'll be able to respond to you. Welcome, Phyllis. Okay, we can proceed on, Catherine. Catherine, please go ahead. Phyllis, could you try joining again with audio? Perhaps that will be a nice way. <laughs> Maybe you can try like you had done the other time when you had uh, the other device. Either way, um, Phyllis will talk to us. And uh, is it okay? I think uh, we need to share this. We need to, I need to start sharing the screen. And for the sake of our participants who are working, as we know, nurses work in shifts, we're going to record this uh, webinar and then the link will be shared with you. So do not panic over that, okay? So give me a moment as I try to share my screen. Yeah. Um, can everybody see that? Yes, 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 country. Um, slideshow. This is what you were talking about the other day on Nothing Now webinar about um, digital literacy. <laughs> Some of us are still struggling. Anyway, here we go. 
So uh, welcome again, everybody. The meeting is officially now being rec um, recorded. So we're going to tackle professional CV structuring for nurses. I'll try very much not to bore you with lengthy lectures. I'll try and make these as interactive as possible. So let's go. So um, those are my credentials. I am a United Kingdom registered nurse. I am also a Kenya registered nephrology nurse, a Kenya registered community health nurse, and a BSN student at the University of Derby. So these are our learning outcomes today that we will be able to present our skills and experiences in a systematic way. We will know the basic structure of a CV and we'll be able to tailor them. That is our skills and experiences to whatever role that we have or in front of us and whatever we want to apply for. So um, when we talk about CV structuring, um, you need to know what's the difference between a CV and a resume. So the Cambridge Dictionary defined it as a brief written description of your education, qualifications, previous jobs, and sometimes personal interests. So I will try not to bore you with this, these very many slides. So you will just have a glimpse of what I've written because I just want to explain what you're talking about. So um, you need to know that we have what you call a master CV. The Royal College of Nursing calls, says that your master CV acts as your central database. So you keep on updating your CV all the time. And this, I want you to understand that this is your master CV. So this is going to grasp and capture each and every, each and every experience that you've had as a nurse, your philosophies, your interests, um, non-nursing roles that you have held, especially for people who, you know, you're in the community in leadership positions, or perhaps you've done some volunteering work somewhere, or maybe you changed your career from another profession to nursing. This is a very good a chance for you to continue updating your master CV. And this is what most people um, present. And that is why most agencies will ask you that you need to structure your CV. That means that we need your master CV, and then we need to make it fit the job description that you're applying for. So um, it, is, it is also called CV alignment. So we just want your master CV. That is what you've compiled. And then we want to borrow those skills and experiences that you have li listed down so that we can transfer them to this new role that you're applying for. I really hope this one makes sense because a master CV is long. It can go for two, three, four pages. But when we need an aligned CV or a structured CV, it's basically a page or a page and a half. Okay, thank you. So the heading, this is the structure. If you're taking notes, um, you need your heading and your heading simply contains your name and your contact details. Now, I know that um, in Kenya, we tend to write things like um, your marital status, your sex, your religious beliefs. I want you to know that these things are irrelevant. They are especially irrelevant when you're applying for a global career, for example, in the United Kingdom. No employer will really want to know your religious beliefs. No employer wants to know your sexual orientation. No employer wants to know you know, what you believe in or what you don't believe in. So your nationality sometimes can be important because of diversity and inclusivity. But then again, it, it depends with which employer you're dealing with and how relevant it is. So um, as an example of a heading, what I've written there, it's simply curriculum vitae for Catherine Minor, myself, and that is contact telephone number and email address. Please, if you have... Um, a work email address as well. Probably this is a good opportunity for you to use it because some of us have personal email addresses and we have work email addresses. If you have a daytime contact telephone number and also a nighttime contact telephone number, this is another opportunity for you to list it here. We need to be able to know that we can contact you at any time that we want to contact you. So um, these are the pitfalls that I was talking about, that your marital status is irrelevant unless specifically asked for by the employer. Now, the second point, it is common in Kenya, I know, for um, some particular employers to ask you about your beliefs because they don't want to employ people who do not match their institutional beliefs. I do not know how right that is really, 
But what I know is that the Equality Act, the Equality Act 2020 of the uh, 2010 of the United Kingdom lists nine protected characteristics which employers cannot use to give you or deny you a job. We have um, things like sex, we have um, uh, race, we have your nationality, you have uh, disability. There are nine protected characteristics. And um, there is an opportunity for you after you have been offered the job, it's called the initial conditional offer. You have a chance to fill another form you know, where you can be able to list all these things. And they will always give you an option of, I do not want to answer. So you can choose that if you don't want. So this is just a summary because we said that I'll keep it um, short and sweet. Thank you very much. So your personal summary, you need to introduce yourself to your employer, aim for 50 to 100 words. And this is what as writers we call your elevator pitch. If I'm trying to, to um, get a chance to write an article, for example, how did I introduce myself to one of the leading newspapers in Kenya, Daily Nation? How do they publish my work? So I had to first of all meet the the editor interested in what I have to say. So the first 50 to 100 words, they have to capture the attention of the, of the person who is reading your work. So I had to make sure that that happens. We call it the elevator pitch. That's just an example. If you're taking screenshots, capture that. If you're taking notes, highlight some of the good things that you can from that example. Pitfalls in your personal summary. I am a team player. People love that word. I know you're a team player. As a nurse, probably I know what you mean. But as an employer, how exactly are you a team player? What do you do? Show us, don't tell us, okay? Don't, don't tell us that you're a team player. If you go back to this example, I've talked about something like, look at the second sentence. I'm self-motivated and reliable while working alone and equally thrive in a team by encouraging and motivating my colleagues. Does that tell you that I'm a team player? It does, isn't it? But it does not tell you vaguely that I'm a team player. I am intelligent. Mm, if you're a nurse, then chances are you're very intelligent. So what do you mean exactly? So detail-oriented, um, it is a wee bit vague. Try and be specific in your elevator pitch. In your personal summary, make it as specific as possible. The other thing is I'm a problem solver. So what do you do? Do you sit down and solve puzzles? <laughs> do you feel crossword puzzles or Rubik's? You know, you try to do the Rubik's cube and then you suddenly get us an answer. No, try and be specific, okay? Thank you. Your key skills and achievements. Now, this is the other thing. So remember you captured that our, um, you give us the elevator pitch. So wow us if you can, amaze us, steal our attention, run away with it make us want to keep on reading what you're telling us. Remember, you're talking to an employer who has never seen you, okay? So I need to know, um, I need to want to meet you. I want to put a face to whatever you have written. So um, this is the time for you to shine, okay? Shine by all means and try to do it in bullet points. Bullet points, why? Remember, this is not an entire CV. I want you to remember this. It's not a master CV. This is an aligned CV. This is a structured CV. You want to go for bullet points. Make my work as an employer or a HR or the hiring team easier. I want to be able to see what you're saying. And then um, what about your skills and achievements will impress me as an employer? So you have applied for a role in a surgical unit as a nurse, but you have experience in the maternity unit. So I want to know, I want you to know that. I want you to start with your experience as a medical surgical nurse. Okay, let your experience as a maternity nurse come after that. Why? Because you're looking for relevance. As an um, employer who I am trying to hire you to come and work in my acute surgical ward, I'll be very keen to see what experience you've gathered along the years in the acute, um, in, a, in a medical surgical unit. I will most likely ignore what you have to say about maternity. I really hope this is making sense, that you want to see what is relevant to the role that you are applying for. Make it a point of looking at the values of an, ex of an organization. Each and every organization in the United Kingdom have values. Okay, I, I don't know how true that one is for Kenya. Yeah, actually we have the same values in Kenya. It's only that perhaps we don't pay attention to them. Each and every employer in Kenya has values, including the county government. The county government of Kiambu has their own values. 
look at these values and then borrow them. Most of the time you will find things like um, we as X and HS trust, these are our values. We do excellence, we are responsible, we are committed or we do teamwork. Try and incorporate those key values in whatever you're trying to say. Somewhere along the way, they will come and make sense to you. So this is just an example of what I tried to write. Um, I was trying to think and uh, remember the bullet points. Everybody can see the bullet points, these ones. Yeah. So make it in bullet points when you're, when you're writing um, your work. If you were to read this, you will see what I'm able to do. I've not told you that I'm, um, I'm good at decision making, but I've told you I am. I have experience in clinical decision making as a shift coordinator or a charge nurse or a deputy charge nurse. So that does not just leave you telling you that I have critical decision making skills. No, I am showing you how that is applying, okay? So let's continue um, your employment and experience. This is what you're continuing to write. Remember we have key skills and achievements and then the other one is employment and experience. How do they differ? These are the things that you have been able to achieve. Okay, the things that, the things that I'm interested in as an employer. These are your skills and your abilities. If you have, um, if you're a child nurse, for example, you need to tell it, just tell it here, okay? And then we look at your employment and your experience. Here, try and start with the most recent one, okay? Start with the most current one and then go backwards. Showcase your duties and, less, and responsibilities. Here is a point for you to look at the job description. Remember when you were applying for that job, there was a job descriptor. Have a look at it, Have, see what they want and see how you can tailor your skills, uh, your employment and experience to relate to that job experience and this is the time when you can tell us about your research project in nursing school what was it and how important was it and to whom so for example um i'm in uni myself and my thesis is on um is on something to do with um kidney disease so how important is that thesis and who is it going to help definitely it's going to help my my renal patients. So what is your research? Do you have a published um, article that is an academic paper, not opinion pieces? Do you have an, a published article? Where can we get it? These are things that you're trying to say. Basically, you're trying to outshine everybody else who has applied for that job, okay? Yeah, so um, you're starting with the most current one. So I gave an example of Jumuiya Mission Hospital in Capsabet surgical ward. I know it, it may or it may not exist, but this is not somewhere that I've worked. Kindly note that it is a fictional. This, this hospital is fictional. So from October, 2020 to, pre, to present. So what was I doing at, um, at the surgical ward? Admissions, assessment and escalation of care of patients in the acute surgical unit. I have clinical competencies in the ECG and cardiac monitoring, venipuncture, cannulation and wound, wound care, administration of medications in all routes and use of intravenous pumps and devices, team leading and reorganization of the unit during the COVID-19 pandemic to act as a COVID-19 ward. For every nurse out there in the world, whoever you are, if you've been working in the front line, when it comes to ex employment and experience in 2021, surely you have something to say about COVID-19. I, I believe that is so. You have something to see. There's something you did during the COVID-19. And that is why I was so deliberate to include this point here. I, I, I was very intentional with it because it makes a lot of sense. Because one of the questions you will uh, be, be asked, and it happened to me in the recent job that I interview that I attended is, Catherine, what was your role? What has been your role during the COVID-19 pandemic? And I had captured it in my, in my CV. So I just explained okay so remember that so these are the other things that um, i'm experienced in especially if you've worked with a geriatric um you have a geriatric experience probably you're working in a care home in the acute medical unit chronic medical unit medical surgical units these are things that you can you can include in that i'll not bore you so much in the details then we have uh, another another experience uh, Nagini Level 5 Hospital in Machakos in Kenya. Again, this is a fictional hospital, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen and others. Please don't misquote me. This is a fictional hospital. I had to be very creative. And um, I was in the acute medical department. Kindly note the timelines. 
yeah? And remember, this timeline can be on either right aligned or it can be left justified or in the center, it does not matter, okay? There is no specific way of where you need to write this timeline. So I need to write what, what was I doing? So I'm, profi I'm proficient in the care and treatment of diabetic emergencies. Again, the things that I did, see something else that I've added here, mentoring students and new, st new staff nurses on rotation. This is very important because it is depicting your leadership skills, isn't it? Thank you very much. So there is also use of the visual inflammatory, I mean, infusion phlebitis call to monitor intravenous cannula. That is just you trying to be very smart. <laughs> so these are the things that you have done, assisting with specialized procedures like central catheter insertions. Um, for people who have worked in ICU, this is a very good time for you to, you know, tell us what you have been doing. Tell us, they are so so many wonderful things in the critical care unit. This is your time for you to do exactly that. And then there's something else. Um, look at the uh, one, two, three, four, the fourth point. So what have you done as a nurse in your unit that has transformed the care of patients? Sometimes we do so much in our units, including changing care plans, the way they look. Probably you have improved the pathograph. Probably you have even introduced a new system of monitoring things, but you just don't write those things down. You don't think they are important. The, part, the, the, the truth is, these things are very important. They are what shows that you're not just a nurse that does things the way they have always been done, but you're a nurse who is bringing change to the field. You're a nurse who monitors and evaluates things and you see the gaps and you do something to rectify the gaps. So that is why I've in, in, introduced a standard communication channel after attending the nursing Congress in 2017, which resulted in effective handovers. If you're a nurse, you know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the ESBA communication tool. We know that uh, when we're doing handovers, we need to be very specific about what you're talking about. We give the background, the assessment, recommendations. This is a tool that has been introduced. So if you do not use ESBA in your unit and you have come up with it and you've been able to introduce it and people are using it, then that is something wonderful. On that note, I remember something when I was working somewhere in Kenya. There's, there's um, the concept of Gamba Kaizen. That is the way you monitor things. You know, you see a problem and then you rectify it, especially about reorganization of a unit. So suppose the filing system was all over the place and then you took photos and then you, you, know, you came up with a very nice filing system. Like there's, a nurse, my, there's a friend of mine who's a nurse in Kenya and she, She's very good in this. And I wonder if she has captured it because uh, she transformed one of the units I was working in. There are those nurses who are always organizing things. So if you come, you've come with a system of Gamba Kaizen, write it down. This is a time for you to shine, okay? Thank you. So basically this is the question you're trying to answer. However, can my brilliance be captured in a one page resume? Because you're such a wonderful nurse. This is what you're trying to do. This is what you need to do. So only list what you actually need, aim for four to six in each section. Your work experience must cover at least three years and some employers ask for five years. So try and see what your employer wants. Most employers, especially in the United Kingdom, they will ask you, we need job experience covering three years. In our cases, most of us um, nurses from Kenya, we have so much experience from different places. Try and see which one is relevant to that role and capture it right there. Again, 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 look at the job description. What is written in the job description? What key employment, um, what key experience is your employer looking for? Is your employer looking for a nurse who is flexible? Is, a, is your employer looking for a nurse who can, who can teach, who can mentor others? These are things that you need to, to include there. I did not use each and every, um, each and every skill that was required, but I've tried to capture as much as possible. So I know you got this and I know that you will do it. So the next bit, your education. You start with the most recent, then go backwards. If you're a student, you need to include this. For example, when I was applying for, my, for the new role that I've told you about, I had to include my, uh, my status as a student that from May 19 to present, I'm taking bachelor's of science degree top up studies student at the University of Derby, England. So this is one of the things that you start with, and then you go to your um, Kenya Registered Nephrology Nursing 
um, higher national diploma, then you go to your Kenya registered nurse or whatever it is, whatever qualification as a nurse you have. So the other bit you need to include is your professional training and activities. These are continuous development topics that you have attended. Include volunteer work or membership to any professional bodies like the RCN, the NANK, the KPNA. So NNAK for people who are not from Kenya, this is the Nurses, National Nurses Association of Kenya. KPNA is Kenya Progressive Nurses Association. KRNN is Kenya Registered Nephrology Nurses um, Association. So things, things like that, um, you need to include them. Examples of what to write on professional training. Um, I had to include this one because it is one of the things I love so much. Seth will at, um, testify. Management of diabetes short course for nurses from the Kenya Diabetes Study Group. So this was a short course that was offered by um, the Kenya Diabetes Study Group. It ran from the month of November to, um, to around February this year. It was quite helpful for me as a nurse, as a nurse who has special interest in um, non-communicable diseases, especially diabetes. So these are some of the things that you, you want to talk about. Dementia awareness, probably you've been trained in that. Digital literacy skills for nurses by Microsoft. I had to write that because the future of nursing um, is actually very digital. Uh, that is one of the things that we've been taught by the Nursing Now campaign. Uh, leadership management, uh, um, leadership and management course, which was an in-house training at Jumia Hospital. So even those short courses that you are trust, um, sorry, your hospital or your organization offers, including uh, maybe HIV testing and counseling, these are things that you want to write as long as, please, as long as they are relevant to the role that you have ap applied for. And that is why we talked about the master CV. So it is from the master CV that we will get all these skills and skills and um, achievements. So the final bit is your social interest and hobbies. Do get original. Don't just tell us about swimming and hiking. What else, what, what do you do? Just be real, okay? Be real, don't shy away from what you love. All work and no play makes you a dull nurse. <laughs> That's what I've written there. So just tell us, maybe one, two or three. It never hurts, just let us know. And then your referees. Most employers need references that span over three to five years. In the United Kingdom, I know they usually ask for about three years, though some will go for five years. Check with that role. And please, if your referee has an official email address, you know, an organization one, it is better to give that one rather than the um, Gmail or Yahoo or whichever account. But if they do not have, you can always explain to your employer that they do not have an organization or email address. And then could we please make use of good referees that make sure that this referee is somebody who has something, something positive to say about you. You do not want to miss out on a job opportunity because your referee um, you know, marked you down. So alert your referee as well, because some employers will contact your referee because before they ask you for the interview. So let your, the referee know that you're using them as a referee. And if a chance comes, they will be asked to talk about you and they need to do exactly that. So that is usually the last piece of your um, alignment of the CV. And these have been my references for this matter. So I hope this has been quite helpful. I know I have tried to rush it, but it is because I'm giving you room for questions and I'm also giving you room for a little bit more discussion about which parts perhaps you feel I need to repeat. So over to you, Sis. Thank you so much, Catherine. That was so exciting. I can see questions coming in and we'll be able to answer them after the presentation. Our next presenter is Phyllis. Phyllis, uh, welcome. Hi, everybody. I'm um, so sorry about two things because one of them is very, one of them is very quiet and the other one, at least I can see my face, but I can't hear so. Anyway, um, apologies, guys. I did not get enough time. Sorry, I do not. Um, please, excuse me. We're having some echoes, so kindly use one device so as we can avoid echoes. 
kindly. Thank you. Kindly unmute yourself and proceed on. Hi guys, so apologies for those inconsistencies. Um, so I'd like to apologize to everyone. I didn't get to prepare a nice uh, presentation just as I've seen for Catherine, uh, simply because I got a very busy small baby, but I, uh, at the end of the day, I still managed to create some of the notes about the whole presentation. So I've seen people do have questions, but I'll start with what Catherine has said. It's just mainly to emphasize. And uh, I believe when she talked about the presentation, she started with how you need to format your CVs. Number one, I need people to know that when you're aligning your CVs and when you're making your CVs, you need to understand that there are several formats. So the current one that uh, Catherine has just talked about, which I'll start with in this presentation is about um, a reverse chronological order. So that is very important. So whenever you start your CV, make sure you start your name in capitals. It's visible, it's bold, so that uh, it screams out your name. And uh, when you're trying, when somebody else tries to try to figure out who exactly is speaking, they can actually see you, uh, see your name and also see you. you can put a picture. Sometimes you don't have to, it's all up to you. Just make sure something is written in bold and caps and it can go up to 28 uh, inches in size. So just make sure you do that. You can use um, very somber dark colors. For example, uh, I don't know if Catherine covered this, but just try and use black, gray, green, blue, navy blue. Those colors are very shouty and uh, they are not uh, dramatic colors like yellow, red and all that, because that tends to lead to something else. Whenever it comes to professional CVs, you need to understand that they need to be in a somber mood. They need to read something that's not going to put it, put, uh, put them away, put them off. Um, I'll just quickly just give you a small story. This morning, I was just listening to my husband and he, they were actually looking at CVs for a new entry. And the first thing he read about a lady's CV, he said, oh, you know, it's actually appalling to my eyes. So I, I went and had a peek and saw what the CV was like. And interesting enough, it's exactly what I'm telling you guys. So as you start your CVs, make sure they're in caps, visible, somber bold colors, black, gray, green, blue, navy blue, and they are center aligned and can go up to 28 in inches. Then under your name, as Catherine has said, I'm not going to repeat her details, but it is very true about putting some of those nine characters, sex, religion, um, uh, uh, abilities and disabilities. Those things are not important because when it comes to this country, those are things we hardly talk about, whether you're black, whether you're mixed, whatever, it doesn't matter. So I understand in Kenya, those were some of the things where when you're taught to write a CV in school, those are some of the things we used to write. But as you come out into the professional world, just understand that some of these things are very, um, touchy, there are subjects that are quite touchy. So just make sure you write what's relevant to your role. Then um, when it comes to professional summary, uh, it's very important you write the things that are key skills to what you've been doing. So just understand that once you're talking about your professional skills, don't go into so much detail about uh, if you want to say you, uh, you're you good at this, you're good at that, just give the actual attributes. You know, in English, we have the word attribute. So it's usually just one, one sentence of who you are attribute. So just give those sorts of attrib attributes and strengths that when the professional, when the uh, employer or somebody who's professional looks at your CV, they'll go straight to your strengths and attributes. So um, as you go, as you go on, I know Catherine has talked about areas of ex expertise. I don't know if she's touched into details, but I'd like to say in this um, chronological reverse chronological email uh, uh, resumes, make sure you have 
good areas of expertise. So as nurses, you have so many areas of expertise. I know Catherine has covered between three to five years, but I do understand there are those who are fresh graduates from school and maybe you do not have uh, enough to write about your career. So you don't have lots of experience to put in that. But don't forget you had lots of learning skills you did back in school. So just ensure you write that as you begin your CV. Do not write things you haven't done because I've seen that's what most Kenyans are doing. You write things you haven't done, you're asked about them, you've got no idea, no clue. You just have to start reading about them. And then when you come here, let me tell you, it's very crazy. So some of those CVs I've seen, the ones that are done that people haven't done exactly what they have written on their papers. But when they come here, their skills are specific to task. So if, you're to, if you told your manager, you're very good at this, you're very good at that, and then when you come to doing the skills, you cannot perform. Here it becomes very tricky because they'll call you a non-performer. So in fact, they'll start doubting the whole of your CV. So if you're in school and you're coming to work for the first time, just write in those details of what you studied and all the clinical skills you did and gained, and you're going to be, you're, you're on your way to greatness. So just ensure that those things are inside there. If you have experience for more than two years, then that's where you write all the skills that you have gained in your workplace. I know there are so many, um, when you're working in Kenya, I'm sure there are so many places where you think uh, maybe just taking temperature, taking vital signs is not important. But understand me, when you're writing those things, don't just write, I take temperatures, uh, what, then what? So maybe write something like, I do temperature, I escalate when there is an issue. Just complete that whole sentence, exactly what happens when you take vital signs. So if I'm taking vital signs, I'm expecting that it's either going to be okay the temperature that I want between the ranges that I want, or it's going to need some escalation or I need to act. So just understand something like right, taking temperatures is a nursing task. So you write, I take my vital signs, I, I monitor and I escalate. So that is like a whole statement, but uh, just don't shorten things like you, you, you take blood pressure, I take pulse, I take yeah, we know you do all that. It makes sense. But tell us what you do once you take them. And then the employer will understand that this person knows what to do with deranged vital signs, not, knows what to do with deranged when the patient has deranged um, results. So just understand that when you write your CV, even the mere, most the mere task, those minor tasks, I don't know what word to use, those really tasks, the, the, the tasks you feel that you do them every day and you don't really um, find that that is more of a nasty thing to write or it doesn't sound glorified or whatever, it doesn't it doesn't need to it doesn't need to be very plain like that it, you can, it can still come out to be a complete statement a nice statement that when you put out to your employer they will know that you're somebody who's astute so uh, apart from that um, of course you've got your professional experience uh, as the chronological order goes, you start with your current and go to your the one you did when you're starting nursing school. Um, uh, what is that? Also accomplishments. I've seen you. I've seen some of those comments you're bringing in. <laughs> uh, also for your accomplishments and hobbies, it's good to write them down. Uh, and as 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 Catherine has said, it's good to tell them what you actually do. Sometimes you may not have hobbies. To be frankly honest with you, I think my hobby is not even swimming. I tried swimming, I, I think. Uh, uh, so I think, and I only read, and that's my only one, and I don't know what else to write. So unless I start telling them I do fictional novels, I don't know what... It's, it's acceptable. So when you know that you don't have that you do not have those hobbies to write there, don't write things that you don't do. Just write other things like accomplishments. Say you went to um, what do you call them? Like a medical co medical conference. You got certificates in something. Just write those accomplishments. You don't really write to need to write your hobbies if you have none. Look, be creative. Look for something nice to put inside them. Also, I don't know if uh, Catherine, you told them, but I do really like seeing CVs that have cover letters. 
something that just gives you a whole definition of who you are in summary before I get inside your CV and dig in to see the specific details I need. But um, as we do all that, even as you prepare yourself to write a good CV, what I'd like to encourage us all is just be you. Don't let somebody else write things that you do not know of. Sit down, think about yourself, think about your skills, think about what you're good at. And I'm telling you, you're going to fill in two papers you will not believe because you've got way more skills than somebody else sitting down writing for you. If you want somebody to write for you, it is still fine. But of course, just sit down and write down all those skills because you've got more than you know. Just sit down, write the skills, even if you take an hour or two just to write down what you know you're good at. I'm sure something good is going to come out of it. So just sit down, write your, your, write your own things, those things you've done at work, those things you've done out of work, and those things you know that are going to put your, foot, your best foot forward. Just write down those skills. I'm sure they're going to get you a job. Maybe most of you should know that nobody wrote our CVs when we came here. We struggled. We pulled our teeth. Like mine, I think I almost didn't have a thumbnail, but I did and I managed to write something really nice. And I remember up to this day, my manager asked me, if I had somebody professional write for me. I told them, no, 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 I thought those are just me. I just sat down and wrote all that stuff. So I know, I know, just put your efforts, put your effort in it and you'll be surprised of what would come out of it. I don't have much to say. That's my quick presentation, even though you cannot see it, you can just hear it and, and see me, but that's basically all I've got to say for now. Um, back to you. <laughs> wow, interesting, interesting, Phyllis. Um, and I believe uh, what you have summarized and given us has really impacted most of the listeners, as you can see on the chat session. And, mm -hmm. uh, well, we can tackle the questions. Someone asked, should I include clinical placement as part of work experience? Catherine, you could answer that one. Yes, yes, um, you, can, you can include that, especially for um, new, new nurses joining mm. the profession. This mm. These are skills that you have gained, as Phyllis has told you. So mm. your clinical experience is very important. Kindly include it. So the answer is yes, you can. But I'm believing as a nurse of three, five years experience, there are mm. even more experience that you have other than clinical placements. So yeah. Mm. Yeah, and I believe that is quite a challenge, especially for uh, nurses and clinical officers or medical officers who have just finished uh, their, their tertiary education, the, the college university. Yeah. Yeah. And so they need to look for employment. And uh, that is quite critical, especially for the nurses who go, and nurses and doctors who go for their one year internship. Internship, yeah. That mm -hmm. so much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, here, uh, Phyllis, there's a, questions for, there's a question for you here. Mm -hmm. uh, is there a limit to the number of pages a CV should have? Miriam or Nesha asked this. So I believe there is no limit, but uh, make sure at least you got two pages. Okay, don't give them a whole, I don't know. I, I know you've got more, most of, I know for somebody who's gone up to five years or more, you've got a lot of experience to write on that, on, on those papers. But if you're at that level, make sure you summarize, just do two to three on your marks. But I believe there's no limit, but try two to three, try to fix in your, your details in a two to three page. At least it will not bore the employers. Yeah. May I say something about that? Um, yeah, yeah, you can add. Yeah, we, we need your master CV. Remember, we have the master CV, which is three, four, five, or whatever pages. Yeah. But when mm -hmm. you're structuring your CV, um, actually, mm -hmm. at least the Royal College of Nursing, um, they recommend for one to two pages. Mm -hmm. So try not to give your master CV. Remember, we agreed mm -hmm. that we have the master CV and then we have the one that yeah, you're structuring. So go for one mm -hmm. to two pages, okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. And Nicholas Ngujo, who is a clinical officer, asked whether the work experience 
uh, that he has gained doing some law camp before he became registered with the government board should be uh, put in the CV? Uh, let me try to answer that. I believe that's quite vital, especially if, we, if it's uh, for a role that you're applying for. Make sure you put it there because if um, you miss it and that's what they're looking for, then yeah. you miss the whole point. Just make sure you insert those some of those details if you did in locum and you know that there are key skills to what you're looking for or what you're applying for. Just make sure they are in your CV. And um, Amy uh, from right from Mexico We, we just lost Cecilia. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm also seeing some of these questions. Yeah. Maybe I can answer as Cecilia comes. Yeah. Uh, somebody has asked about adding a photo on the CV. I believe that's um, all up to you. It's yeah. optional. Yeah. If you feel that you want to put your photo to be seen out there, that's good. Mm -hmm. But don't forget you age. So if you prepare, if you plan to uh, redo that same CV on the same uh, sort of document and your face has changed, maybe you've added or lost some weight, just know yeah. you'll have to redo it just to capture the features. Yeah, welcome yeah. back, Cecilia. We were just answering about uh, somebody asking if about they can put a photo on the on the CV, which we say, yes, they can. It's mm -hmm. optional, but people not to forget that they'll age and they will need to redo that CV with a fresh picture. Yeah, and I believe um, some pictures can be used for other purposes, so it will avoid people who spot. Yeah. Hmm. CV. Mm -hmm. um, Someone else asked, uh, I've worked in the same organization six years, which have been spent shuffling between more than one department and acting on several capacities. Mm -hmm. How do you factor this in putting in mind the timelines in this situation? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, when it comes to your employment and um, work, work history, this is where you're capturing this, you're including everything that you've been doing, but in different sections, that is, let's say you've worked in the surgical unit, you've worked in the maternity department, you've worked in theater, kindly just list it in that chronological order. So it is okay if you have worked in that, um, that same unit, probably for six, 10 years, but you have held different responsibilities, please put them there. So it is perfectly in order. Mm -hmm. oh, thank you so much. Welcome. And uh, Carol asked a very interesting question. If I have a current working gap of one and a half years, what do I put on my CV? You find that you have been out of work for uh, some quite some period of time. How do you factor that in a CV? Phyllis, you want to go? So yes, let me let me give it a go. So if you haven't been at work, um, I don't think that's actually uh, something that you want to write on there because if you're looking for employment, you can just leave it. But just know that some of these places like here in the UK, they will ask you what you are doing in between the periods of a certain time. Yeah. So say you were not at work for one and a half years, they will ask you what you're doing. So they will not ask you on your CV. They'll just ask you to write it down and then they'll they'll know what to do. But basically for you, if you haven't done, uh, if you haven't been working for an, a year and a half, just don't put it on your CV. It may put off some of the employers, but if your agency or your employer requests you to tell them what you've been doing in the year and a half, then you can tell them. Yeah, uh, that's what I'd say, yeah. 
That is quite true. And the other thing to remember mm. is please do not feel a guilt because you've been out mm. of work. Some people mm. take time off to take care of their families. Some mm. people take time off to do other things like try other new roles. Some mm. people take off time to go and travel the world. So do mm. not do not shy away. When your employer when your employer tells you, please explain the gap in your CV, kindly mm. be real. Just don't fake things. Be real yeah. with what you are doing. Yeah, like for example, me, I'm off work just because I gave birth and here it's nine months. So what would I write in my CV and have to say nine months I was off yeah. taking care of my child. So it's just be real, just say exactly what it is ha that happened in between that period. They'll be fine with it. Just don't lie. Yeah. Say exactly what it is. That's mm. interesting. And especially for, for the nurses in Kenya, you uh, in the recent times finding a job is quite quick or I call it uh, uh, it, it, it really gives a hard time for the nurses for one to get a job and that really frustrates one when they are going to put down their CV. I think that's that's quite interesting. Yeah. Uh, we also have another question. Um, do, how how does short courses fall? Where do, does short courses fall? Um, that's what I talked about, professional training and, and um, development. I talked about that. These CMEs that you have attended, these short courses, small certificates here and there, this is where they fall. That is the professional activities and development section. Mm -hmm. That is where you put them. So uh, just to add on that, uh, no, it, some CVs, you wouldn't have that. If you didn't attend any of those, you wouldn't have that. Just if you have those things, the thing is you're trying to make yourself look good to your employ to your new employer or your tr prospective employer. So for that CV to look good, just make sure you put those things, just write down a new co column of professional training or development and add in those things just to make it look good. And because it's not just looking good, you have actually studied those things. So it's, it's true, you have actually done those studies. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, the, the topic has been so interesting and uh, listeners and participants are asking for a sample CV. Um, maybe Catherine and Phyllis will put their email addresses in the chat box mm -hmm. on the Q&A section and you'll be able to contact them and see someone is requesting to be assisted in their CV. So kindly lie us with um, Phyllis and Catherine through their emails that they'll be put that they'll put on the chat area. Okay. So um, I may also um, re request how could you advise the young nurses and the midwives being the year of the health and care worker. You want to go first? Oh, I go first. Okay, fine. Uh, well, um, is this to do with a CV or is it general? Well, um, I think it should be with CV considering that um, nurses want to go to, to the UK, they want to go to the US. And so how do they go about uh, their CV? Okay, just like Phyllis said, when we did this, actually Phyllis and I came to the UK in the same year. When we did this, we did it by ourselves. There was no agency that was aligning our CVs. There was no one to structure our CVs. So we had to do it um, by the skin. You know, we had to do this. So go ahead, sit down, think about what you have done. If you're a new nurse or midwife, think about your skills, your clinical placements, like we have said. Think about your internships, things that you have accomplished, and write them down. You can do this, spend time, at least an hour, two hours, and then always remember that do not send in your first draft. The first draft is always a rough work. Kindly go back and edit what you have written. If you have somebody who can proofread your work, you need to send it to somebody. But I always say, as a writer, the third, the third, the third draft is usually a proofreading one. So you do a, the, the sample one, you go ahead and um, 
edit it, and then you proofread it. This is what you do. And then you're able to present it in a PDF format or a Word document, depending on what your employer has asked you. So some people will recommend PDF documents and others will recommend Word document, either or it is still all right. Remember also as a young midway for residents, you might lack um, referees in terms of experience. Go for the people who you um, who are your mentors during your placements. So go for your educational tutors or lecturers. Go for your clinical instructors or clinical educators. These are the people that you want to write their details in your referee section. If there are activities that you took part in as a student, you need to write them just like Philly said, introduce a new column of things that you have actually achieved. Please write them down. So this is what I can tell you as far as CV writing and CV uh, presentation goes. And then remember, there is no particular CV just like Philly say that is a UK based CV. Yes. That is a very important factor for you to know. It is not that, no CV. that is a disclaimer. A disclaimer you. <laughs> there is no CV that is a UK based CV. So kindly don't fall into that, um, that mentality. It is all about a systematic presentation of your key skills, employment and your education. That is all that you're presenting to your employer. I'm very sure that Phyllis's format of the CV is quite different from mine. And both yes. of them have seen us scale the heights of the profession in the United Kingdom. So do not panic, you got this. Yes, let me just repeat that disclaimer. There is no UK-based CV. There is no US-based CV. No. There is no Aguerera, Angelina, I don't know what best CV, there is nothing like nothing that. Like that. So I need people to understand and you need to put it inside your head that you're scalable, you're marketable, yes. wherever you are without having to involve even professional um, CV writers. writers. You are your best when you sit down for two hours and do your CV. Yeah. Then I also want people to understand the other thing, apart from there is no CV or whatever, there is no UK based stuff. You also need to know that once you sit down for two hours, the things that are going to flow out of that mind, that little brain of yours, which you think that doesn't hold enough knowledge or cannot store the skills you did or what, you'll be surprised of what can come out of it. So just give yourself a pat on the back and say, you've got this and do it. You yeah. will do it. Yeah. We did it. We did it. You'll yes. do it. They will do it. And remember, if there is anybody you can rely on in this life, it's actually yourself. yourself. Even the person mm -hmm. that you're sending this CV to, they are also stumbling in the dark. But if there is one person who will never fail you when you need them, it's yourself. Yeah. And one more thing people need to know that these employers don't know you. Yeah. That person you're giving the professional CV to write doesn't know you. Yeah. You know yourself. Exactly. So present yourself in a way that you want these people to know you. If you want them to know you as a competent nurse, doctor, clinician, whatever, whoever you are, if you want them to know you as that person, sit down for two hours, create something that will appeal that eye and they will know you. Also, please people just understand, write your one CV. Uh, don't start writing a CV, I don't know, for theater, mm -hmm. only full of theater things, mm -hmm. such that if you've also done medical, a medical, surgical, um, if, you, if you have those skills and you want to give a medical surgical, and now you have to go back again mm -hmm. and write a medical, surgical, that is not you. You are not that person. You do not just do one skill. If you're in Kenya right now, I understand that you do all four skills or even more you've done so many departments write them all down so that you don't keep writing new cvs every time you want to do a theater cv you write a theater cv you put all your theater vomit there and then when you come to uh, you want to do reno oh now i have to think of reno there's nothing that, it's not you it's simply yeah. not you. Yeah. You have been in so many departments. Write them all down. Write a good comprehensive CV that wherever, whichever department you give, yeah. you're good to go. Yeah, and that is very important, Phyllis. I mm. really have to emphasize that. I have mm. seen cases where nurses are applying for psychiatric roles, especially mental health nursing. And then you think that your employer is only going to be impressed because you have been in all 
you know, mental health Absolutely. unit in Kenya. No, 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 no. Just stick to who you are. Mm. If you want a dialysis job, stop imagining things about dialysis because there's something mm. Philly said that when mm. you come here, it's all about what you can actually do. Can mm. you imagine being put in front of that hemodialysis machine and you don't know what to do? Mm. And your CV tells us that you know what to do with dialysis. Mm. They will even report you to the nursing and midwifery council because you are yeah. lying. So mm -hmm. be authentic, be real, be yourself. Let nobody mm -hmm. diminish your skills because you're mm -hmm. marketable just like Phyllis has said. Just mm -hmm. candidly tell us who you are. Mm -hmm. And I think that is very, very important because mm -hmm. as nurses uh, are processing their out-migration to other countries, they tend to, uh, to, to reignite their, uh, their focus into a specific field, filling their CVs with things, with words and mm -hmm. uh, terminologies they don't even yeah. understand. Mm -hmm. and yeah. I think, as yeah. Phyllis has said, that gives a very different impression we are not, when you are not mm -hmm. able to perform what exactly. you are doing mm -hmm. in exactly. your CV. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. uh, we, uh, someone asked, uh, how do you uh, do as for nursing students. Mm -hmm. Just like we have said, um, I'll, I'll give a go and then Phyllis, you can um, emphasize on this one. As we have said, look at the structure that I have just given. And uh, if you email me, I'll give you, um, I'll also be happy, happy to give you a template of a student nursing um, CV. The thing is, you, you need to look at what we said, including, uh, and I think for student nurses, this is a point where you might want to think about a cover letter because mm -hmm. you do not have so much that you need to present and then think mm -hmm. about your heading and then go straight to your key skills and achievements as a, as a student nurse, what have you been doing? And also remember your clinical placements. We cannot overemphasize this one. So th that is what you will be presenting at this particular point. Phyllis? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so I'll just emphasize clinical, clinical skills and experience. Those are some of the things you need to write down. You also need to write down your professional training. I know you've just come out of school, but have you gone into any other training, seminars or whatever? Some of those things, be keen to go to them because you just put them on your CV. Just don't sit down and wait for a job. And then when it comes, you're like, oh my God, my CV is empty. What do I write? Yeah. No, no, just don't do that. Just be proactive. Just get out there. If there are NNK meetings, if there are, I don't know, NMCs, even in your, in your I believe there is a RCNI, no, not RCNI. I mean, the UK, I'm thinking of training in, I know. Okay, so yeah, there is training. There are trainings, the ones you need so that you can fill up your book and you can get um, uh, your revalidation or renew of your license. Yes. Just fill in those trainings because they are, they are quite important. And some of these things, all you have to do is just be clever, remember, sit down, try to remember all those things you've done in school, some of the things you thought are key skills, some of the things that put your best foot forward. Just write down those things. They're the ones that are going to market you. Yeah, and any outreach programs and medical camps that you have yeah, attended as medical a student, camps. they are very yeah. important. Those mm. are skills that cannot be replaced by anybody. Mm. Um, that is interesting. And Mark Otsila is so thrilled by this engaging conversation. And he asked, uh, in, in Riparis, what do you consider? Or rather, what should you consider when you're putting down your resume? You need somebody who knows you. Um, let it be somebody you've worked with. That is number one. Let it be somebody who can say something brilliant about you because some referees might actually be quite malicious. Don't go for somebody who is not in a position of, um, you know, for saying in a position of saying something that is reflective of who you are. If you do not have them, you can go for your clinical mentor. We all had mentors as nurses. We all had clinical instructors. Actually, we call them clinical instructors in Kenya. I'm thinking about the mentors in the UK. So you need to write, those are the people that you can first of all talk to and then you write, write, write their details down. Then make sure it is somebody who is um, a wee bit computer literate. Yes, somebody who has access to email because Email is the, is the modern communication um, route. So let it be somebody who can access an email, somebody who knows their way around the internet a little bit. Because most times in the United Kingdom, they will send a form to your referee for them to go and feel about your attributes. So it, you need somebody who is able to do exactly that. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and also in the digital age, um, someone asked, is it okay to protect the CV from being edited before submitting? Um, Phyllis? Okay, let me just quickly say, it really doesn't matter. The reason why I'm saying that is because why well, the reason why you're protecting this CV is so that somebody else does not copy it. Am I right? Yeah. But if you're protecting it, even if they copy it, maybe they'll just copy the format, but yeah. yet they can't use the details on there. They can't use your your emails. Experience. They can't use your WhatsApp. Yeah. They, can't, they can't use your number. It doesn't really matter. So if you want to protect it, that you know your reasons, but really, generally, it's just as it is. Yeah. Just leave it as it is. Nobody can re replicate you, so it will just remain as it is. So if you need to, pro if you feel the need, you have your reasons, well yeah. and good. But really, there is no point. No Absolutely, and. Um... <laughs> I think people are still getting uh, so much thrill, and I can see some are inspired to get to the UK. Um, as we wind up, I would like to uh, we'll start with uh, maybe Phyllis to tell us what you do, how people can find you, and uh, talk to someone. There's someone who is watching you. They're wondering, how do I get to the UK? How do I get to to, to have greener pastures, so to say. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. okay, so basically you want me to tell them how to come to the UK or how to get me when they come here or? <laughs> <laughs> that <Which> too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, oh, well. Yeah. Yes, yes, Cecilia. Well, you can inspire someone, maybe <laughs> someone who's planning to get to the UK and talk to some, talk to a young one. Okay, so basically, I'd like to say UK is a really good place to work. Well, of course, it's not the easiest because it's not home, but we make it work and make it home. And that's what I have done so far. So I've been here for a couple of years now and I'm loving it. I've got now a young family and I'm loving it. My husband actually is around here. He was saying if, 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 he, wants, if he wants to be asked any questions about CV, he can answer himself. Awesome. <laughs> Maybe he can say hi. Yeah, I, I, I will ask him to come and say hi. He is actually a very senior guy in, at his workplace and he does interviews as well. Actually, let me just call him there. One second. Go ahead. <laughs> um, that's quite interesting. And um, well. So here, yeah. So here comes my husband. I introduce him. He's Mark. Hi, Hi Mark. <laughs> How are you? Be good. So I've been listening to uh, some of what's been said. Um. So I would say a, a couple of points basically to add. Um, so around this kind of interesting, um, like you've got these special interests, right? That are really interesting. Like people have like yachting and all this stuff. Um, in the UK, generally we look quite favorably upon kind of any sort of volunteering type work. So if you've done some work for charities, any kind of charitable work, if you've helped out in a local school um, helping youths that sort of thing is always looked upon very favorably on cvs here mm -hmm. um, the second thing i would say is um, in the uk um, i don't know how it is in kenya but in the uk you're not actually allowed to give a bad reference mm -hmm. so let's say you're working in the uk and then you move jobs to you know another hospital or whatever um, employers are not allowed to give bad references however what they can do is refuse to give a reference and that's that basically equates to the same thing so you know if your employer refuses to give a reference you know that that's that's basically a bad reference but just to clarify 
your employers here are not allowed to give a bad reference. Hmm. Um, and yeah, as, as Phyllis mentioned, kind of the layout of the CV is really important. It has to be really clear. Don't, you know, don't mix too many font types. Yeah. Keep it really simple. Um, for my personal CV, I have a picture of myself. Um, I don't know, maybe I just think I look good. I don't really know, but <laughs> I, I just kind of, I like to have, yeah, I like to put that on there. But um, it's, I think typically people more often don't put pictures than do, um, but I, I quite like to have a picture. Um, and on my CV as well, I have basically like a table, like a bar chart. Mm -hmm. on my CV mm -hmm. where I basically rank the skills I have and I give each bar kind of a percentage so which which areas am I most basically comfortable in mm -hmm. um, I think for the whole um, education um, employee or in, yeah employment kind of chronological order I mean, if you've only studied and you've got maybe a, like an internship or something, it's fine to put your education first. Yeah. But typically you would put your education last, right? You put your experience first mm -hmm. in you know, reverse chronological order and then put your um, education last. Um, it's also quite nice to have at the very top of your CV um, a three or four, sen three or four uh, sentences kind of almost what your mission statement is you know what you want to get out of your next role what you bring to the role mm -hmm. um and the sort of things that you enjoy so it, even three or four sentences it just kind of it, it adds that kind of personal touch right so you know i'm not a big fan of writing covering letters personally i mean it may be different in the medical profession but i'm in finance so typically we don't bother with uh, covering letters um but what we do do is have kind of these um, mission statements, if you like, at the top of your CV. Yeah. Um, that's, that's quite nice. And so um, just before you go, we have a question for you, Mark, uh, from mm -hmm. David. He asked, what, what's your most recommended font for a CV? Mm -hmm. uh, most recommended fonts. Um, uh, I have a personal favorite, but I can't remember what it is off the top of my head. But Arial is fine. Like, don't, yeah, exactly. Arial, yeah, Calibri, that's my favorite one. So, that's the one I have on my CV is Calibri. But don't mix font types. Yeah. Um, I would say for your, when you're writing down your experience, so have the hospital name in bold, yeah. but have it the same size as the description of what you've done underneath. And keep your CV to no more than two pages, because honestly, when we're going through CVs, if we have more than two pages, we generally just don't bother reading it because we just don't have time to read more than two pages. So, um, you know, sometimes we see CVs with people that have got, you know, 15, 20 years experience. But what you have to do is basically condense it into your last, condense what you've done um, and obviously put your most work, recent work experience first. Absolutely true. And I believe uh, that was so informative and uh, for the viewers have been able to understand what you've said, keep the CV simple, two to three pages. And um, wow, thank, thank you for the opportunity. No problem. I'll pass it you back to Phyllis. Thank you, Mark. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Mark. Um, yeah, as we wind up, uh as you, if you have more questions i can see time is not on our side if you have more questions you can uh get to catherine and phyllis the, catherine's email is on the chat chat area and oh. Phyllis will be able to yeah uh, email address on the chat so um as we, uh the final stage we give to catherine minor take the stage oh Sorry, I was trying to write um, Phyllis's email addresses. You have it. I think you can write it. <laughs> All right. I'll just write it because I'm on my phone. <laughs> yeah, just quickly type it. Uh, well, just like Phyllis said, um, there is 
great opportunities in the UK. I know that one of the motivating factors for many people is actually money. And I will tell you without mincing my words that you have an opportunity to make money in the United Kingdom. Some mm -hmm. of us came here, especially myself, knowing that I will only stay in the UK for a year or so, and then I'll go to the United States to make big money. But I'm telling you, I've made UK my home. Uh, yeah, this is where I will do everything that I need to do. I remember when we started, um, Phyllis and I had a chat. Um, she really inspires me. I have to admit that she's the one who pushed me into leadership because I always shied away from leadership roles. I've always been quite a timid girl, trying to be very bold in my writing, but very shy when it comes to verbal communication. But she quite insisted that I needed to do more than just write. I needed to take the bull by the horns. And this mm -hmm. is what you, you need to do as a nurse who is in Kenya. Kindly desire better desire better remember your skills remember your training in nursing school there is no nursing school in kenya that is easy there is none i've not had any student nurse who has told me that the, their training was amazing the, the training is always very grilling please want better desire better and the united kingdom is giving you an opportunity for student nurses whether you're in mexico whether you're in pakistan or wherever you are the united kingdom is accepting you as a student nurse fresh from um, school so you don't need to have so much experience. You can come, come in as what they call newly qualified nurse. It is the, the process is still the same. You'll do your English exam. You'll do your competence-based exam. So please do not shy away from the United Kingdom. Have confidence in yourself. And remember, just like we said, you can never fail yourself. We can fail you. There are things that we might do that will not be relevant to you, but you will never fail yourself. The other thing I have to insist is for every nurse out there, please have mentors, have people that you look up to and have these conversations with them. Sometimes, Phyllis, I look back and I say, the kind of journey I've taken in my nursing role, I wish I had a mm -hmm. mentor, somebody who was mm -hmm. out there to tell me, Catherine, I think based on your strengths and weaknesses, that is what we mm -hmm. call a SWOT analysis. Strength and weaknesses, opportunities and threats analysis. You look at that and you say, you are strong in this and we, I think you can do this one better. So why don't you follow this route? You will find that some of you nurses in Kenya, you end up doing reproductive health, higher national diploma. You go back and do pediatric nursing, higher national mm -hmm. diploma. You go back and do, you need to have a mentor who is looking at you and telling mm -hmm. you, this is the way that we need to go. So if you have not identified mm -hmm. a mentor, I really encourage that. Even if you're a nurse who has had 15 years in practice, you need a mentor. Have somebody mm. who you can be, you can have a tete-a-tete -tete with and you can be real with them and you can show them who you are and then they can advise you because it's quite important. So I really wish you all the best as you plan this journey. Remember that no journey started overnight. You just need to make the first step. Make the first step and we will be happy with Phyllis to welcome you over here. And yeah. there are opportunities. Now, listen, um, I think it is nice to give a personal story. I started mm -hmm. with NHS. Okay, when I came, I started in a care home. And mm -hmm. I need to answer to Decla. Yes, it is okay to give you a home manager as a referee. My home manager, where I used to work, still acts as my referee even now. So mm -hmm. I stayed one year in a care home. And then I joined NHS. NHS is the, the National Hospital Service. So I joined the hospital mm -hmm. as a renal nurse. And I joined them in August last year. And less than a year later, they made me a staff mentor. I have been acting as a vascular link nurse. And mm. I have been able to do so many things. And recently, I got a new job down in London as a band seats nurse. So the mm. thing is, believe in yourself. Believe in mm. the skills that you have. And when you mm. see opportunities, like Philly says, take mm. it and run away with it. When yeah. an opportunity presents itself, marahio hio, like we would say in Kenya. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so mine I'll quickly say, yeah, so mine I'll just uh, summarize it and say, nursing is very, very broad. So for those of you who are in managerial positions and you think you want to squash the ones who are small younglings who just came from school, because I've seen that when I used to work in Kenya, you squash the ones who are in school, you don't want them to learn, you don't want them to have opportunities. It is very broad. So what I'd advise everybody is uplift each other. Don't step on each other. Uplift each other. Hold each other's hands. 
walk in the nursing journey and the directions are wide. You'll be surprised because right now, everybody, it's all about specializing. People want to specialize in this, specialize in that. In Kenya, it's a bit specific, but once you come here, you'll realize even that specialty is broad in itself. Yeah. If you're saying perioperative, that's a broad specialty. Say cardiology, say, I don't know, um, orthopedic, say, it's quite broad. And even when you go into those, other small uh, categories, they're even broader. Yeah. So just think nursing is very broad and we need to expand. Also those who are in medicine, those who are in clinical um, medicine, just expand yourself, don't stick in one area, move. And when your friend is moving, help them move and also figure out where you want to move to. Don't try to hinder them to move because maybe your direction is not the same as them. Right. So just move in yours, look for your roots, look for your mentors, hold your mentors' hands, move in your direction. You realize this world needs, it. we have a lot of healthcare um, uh, skills to give, but yet we stick to some areas where, whereas we can be really broad, we can really spread and we can do lots of things. So give yourself space, if you're a leader somewhere, let the younglings glow, grow. If you um, mentor somewhere, let the other ones grow. I mean, just move so that people can grow because there are so many places we can, we can go, so many things we can do, but we just have to let go of each other. Just let people grow, let them succeed because once you let them succeed, you're paving way for yourself as well. Um, I also, I also have a short history. Once I came here, it wasn't easy. My settling down wasn't easy here, but I also moved to NHS. And the moment I moved to NHS, I was even allocated a theater to manage because um, um, I've specialized in neuro. So I do a lot of work in neurosurgery. So I was given a theater, I ran and ran it. But when I, I got pregnant, I just left it. I've also joined ILCN as a steward. So I help people who are in problems when they are at work. And I, I try to solve uh, problems out for them. So just move, grow. You got space, let them move, let them grow. Because the more you let people grow, the more you're going to grow yourself. You might think you have a lot of information and knowledge, and then you keep it all to yourself thinking you're the know it or you'd be surprised. Those young ones who just came there, they've got more information than you. Just impact them the knowledge, let them move with it. You'll be surprised what they'll give back to you because they, the more you give, the more you receive, so move. Yeah. That's all I've got to say and grow. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> I like that. And especially with the, uh, with the nursing now challenge, you need mm. to challenge the status quo. Yeah. What can you do? What mm -hmm. can you help others? Yeah. And how mm. do you make nursing a progressive profession? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so uh, someone asked me, uh, you... Uh, Phyllis and Kate say they are writers, bloggers. Could you give us where we can get your content, where we can interact with you guys? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Phyllis? Ah, oh, oh, it's so unfortunate. I just closed my blog the other day oh, just because did. I had too much stewardship to do. But yeah, so I'm not blogging at the moment. I used to blog um, a blog called Nurses at Your Doorstep Kenya, but I stopped it. So now I'm just doing a lot of stewardship work because I've got cases to solve uh, for nurses around here. Mm. And also I'm doing my studies as well. I'm joining Dabi, so <laughs> I, and then I a small baby. So I thought, I think maybe I'll put blog into the side for once. Yeah. But yeah, just, connect with me via my email I'll just respond to what you've got to do mm -hmm. that's true um, as for me I do um, I write at www.ketmimi.com I have an interest in teaching especially about non-communicable diseases so when you log into that uh, blog you will find a lot of content that has to do with kidney disease especially courses and what we need to know and what we need to teach our patients what you need to know as the general public it is all there I also write a lot on uh, my Facebook page that is Kate Mimi follow me on Twitter at Kate Mimi 1772 and also I started a baby YouTube channel. Um, so just the other day I started a YouTube channel is under the name Catherine Minor. So let's, let's interact. Use my email address, just like I have told you there in the chat section. 
connect with me. I'll be happy to hold your hand when I can. Before my time comes for me to also say, I'm relaxing to take care of a baby. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, <laughs> on a light note. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And it's really inspiring and we have a young uh, nurse called Wairuma Maina. She'd like to engage you more in how to prepare for an interview. Mm -hmm. uh, you can interact through the email address uh, provided below. And we have been recording live on Facebook and we shall put it also, the recording, we shall put it for those who came in, we shall put it on Kate Mini YouTube channel. Uh, she has said it's www. KateMimi.com. That's my blog. Yes. And so uh, you'll be able to get more information uh, through those recordings. And continue engaging us. We'll be there for you. And this has been a wonderful session. Mm. For like minded nurses for indi from independent professional nurses, and without uh, I don't yeah. have too much questions. Yeah. So, those that you have not been able to answer, kindly link uh, through the email addresses provided, and we shall be able to get back to you. And stay tuned for the next webinar, uh, to be uh, to be given out later. This has been your uh, your your host, your moderator. My name is Cecilia Ndongo. I am a registered nurse in Kenya and proud to be here with you. Thank you, all of you, and have a lovely and nice evening. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. <laughs>